What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know how to banish the myth of multitasking from your brain forever? Well, I got good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you exactly how to do this. Normally, it's $45, but since you're a loyal listener of the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. You're listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you want to step into your greatness, you've come to the right place. Here is your host, the human strength expert, Kyle Newell. Hey everybody, it's Kyle once again with another episode of Unlocking Your Inner Strength. This is episode number 95, coming up on the big 100, which is kind of hard to believe. Today, not going to go over as much strength training or nutrition but this all ties together. So normally, uh, I'll give you a mindset piece. Today, the whole thing's kind of about mindset. This is about how to discover your life's philosophy. And the best way I know to help you do that is to share some of my philosophy in life. The reason this popped into my head as something that could be useful for people is when you look around, most people don't have any philosophy with how they want to live their life. They go to their nine to five, they kind of go through the motions, They look to get ahead, sometimes immorally, and they're just lost. But if you have a philosophy, it makes every decision much easier. The lack of making a decision, lack of uh, decision causes a tremendous waste of energy. Most people can't make decisions in life because they don't know what is important to them and what's going to kind of put the wind into their sails. So with that said... These are no important uh, order. Things I just wrote down that I know, you know, they kind of, they're part of my spirit. And this is, these are my, my guiding principles. So the golden rule, again, you can agree with this stuff or not, doesn't matter to me. But the golden rule is something I always used to teach on day one when I was a phys ed teacher to all the kids. Golden rule, everybody knows is treat others as you would like to be treated. And I've always believed that. And I'll give you an example even to this day, when my best buddies and me are together and they're making fat jokes about each other and all this stuff, I don't get involved with that because you should never intentionally make somebody feel bad about themselves. You should never intentionally make somebody feel bad about themselves, especially if you are a leader, okay? And you're a leader, whether it's leading yourself, leading your family, leading, leading people at your business, whatever it is, leading a team. So live by the golden rule. There's this thing called karma, right? And that's just energy. Let's say a boomerang, uh, energy boomerang. You throw it, it's going to come back to you. And I believe that. So the energy you put out there is what you're going to get back. And uh, I've had a lot of good people in my life that treat me very well and are always there for me. And uh, I don't think that's a coincidence. Second thing I have on my list is that growth mindset. I call it the slight edge. Always trying to get better always trying to get a little bit better. It never ends. Just like any goal, as I've talked about, or any process, it's a continual thing. It's never, you're never going to reach the finish line. So even to this day, I study every day. Now, usually it might only be 10 minutes. Sometimes it's more, but I go until I learn something new and I do that for uh, business and I do it for training still. I watch 10 minutes of a training DVD just to stay sharp, stay in it, and a lot of stuff I've already watched before, but every time you, you read something or look at something or learn something, again, you're a new person, so you absorb it differently. But that slight edge, you don't have to be the most talented person. Talent is like a, a rocket ship. It gets you up there quick, but then to sustain that, I'd rather be the, the, the hare. Excuse me, the tortoise. I keep misspeaking today. But the tortoise and the hare, I'd rather be the tortoise. Uh, just keep getting better. When I went to a basketball camp when I was, uh, let's see... It was middle school and early high school. We used to go to Steve Lapis's Villanova basketball camp when he was the coach there, when Kerry Kittles was there and, and some of those guys, Jason Lawson. And he used to talk about, he would tell us uh, when he, you know, give his midday pep talk, every time you touch a basketball, you're going to get a tenth of a tenth of a percent better. But it adds up. Just keep practicing, keep dribbling, keep working on skills, keep doing this. And that stuck with me. I mean, think about that. That's over 20 years ago, you know, 20 some years ago. And it still stuck with me. It was a young kid sitting in the audience listening to him. 
Next thing on my list is total responsibility. You could call it violent accountability, whatever you want, but most people give away all their power in life because they always want to pretend that somebody out there is doing something to them. Circumstances of life are controlling, you know, how their life is going. And somebody else got lucky and, and it wasn't their fault that this thing happened. When you actually always try to put the power or give control to others or circumstances, you're giving all your power away because that means you're saying that you have no control over it. Thus, you can't change it. Now, even if something happens to you and it's completely out of your control, and a lot of times that is the case, you still have responsibility about your attitude and how you respond. Responsibility, not reactability. Reaction is the animal brain. So responsibility. Use your higher level brain, your prefrontal cortex, the human brain. Take total responsibility in your life. And all of a sudden you realize that you are creating your life as you go along. It's not happening to you. And remember too, life's a game. It's to be enjoyed. You got to play it. Next one, it, it, on the surface, sounds like it's uh, very conceited, but it's not. But it's about me. Now, what do I mean by that? For example, I was telling Devin recently that, you know, whenever you say something to somebody, there's some kind of reaction initially in their head. It's lightning quick. That's the deeper part of their brain. They're either going to take offense if you're judging them or whatever it is, right? So everything you say carries energy. And it's going to cause some kind of reaction and later on, hopefully a response if warranted. But when that happens to me, let's say Devin says something to me, you know, and I could take it the wrong way. It's not about me going back at her, trying to make her see my way. It's about me, meaning why did I react that way? Why did I respond this way? Why did I have these thoughts? What is that telling me? How do I grow from that? So every situation, it's about you. How do you get growth from that? And it's a growth mindset. How do you become a bigger person because of that or expand your boundaries? So meaning that it's about me, it's whenever you, you feel like you're, you're, you know, using tension or force, ask yourself, what is it, what is it saying about me that I, I came through that way or that I had those thoughts and how do I rise above that? What's up, Unlocking Your Inner Strength listeners? How would you like to know how to banish the myth of multitasking from your brain forever. Well, I got good news for you. I've put together a special report showing you exactly how to do this. Normally it's $45, but since you're a loyal listener of the show, you can get it for only $10 at unlockingyourinnerstrength.com forward slash time. Next one, all this really ties into this other one is to inspire others. You know, for the, for the new strength is to inspire people to transform their life. And my personal life is really the same thing, right? Through my words and my writing. Uh, to inspire other people. And I guess you could throw my actions into that. So if you look at the Newell Strength one, to inspire people to transform their lives. You want to have eight words or less, so kind of a mission statement for your life that means something to you. Though. You don't need this whole one-page, two-page document for business or for your life because you can't remember that. For me, what really boils down, inspire others. How do I do that? Through my actions, okay? Which means I have to stay inspired. I, and it's a, a cyclical in, in a... It feeds itself, right? If I inspire others, I become better. I inspire others, I become better because I'm inspired because I'm helping others and it just keeps going like that. So inspiring others. And I actually got an email from uh, a guy named Matt yesterday who came to one of my workshops two years ago and he wanted to reach out and say he finally did what he said he was going to do at that workshop. Couldn't believe it was been two years, but everything, all those lessons at that workshop stuck with him and he just wanted to say thanks. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, you never know when your inspiration is going to take hold with somebody else. Don't worry about it. Got two more for you. Autonomy. I live life on my terms. Anybody that knows me can tell you that. Now, does that mean I'm 100% a rebel? Not at all. I mean, I work close. I follow the law. I do good things because my moral compass is good. And I, I practice the golden, golden rule. But I do live on my terms. And, and that was something I used to say yes to everybody, right? Then I realized um, if you're in every situation, you're saying no to somebody. Usually that's yourself. So you have to think about that, okay? If there's too many shoulds in your life, you're not living on your own terms. You're living on somebody else's terms. If you ever email me, you know you get an auto response. I check my email maybe twice a week, sometimes less, because I'm not going to let other people's uh, needs and wants dictate how my day goes. And I have in there my phone number. If they need me, they can text me. And that's how it goes. But autonomy, living on my life, that, that's why I uh, became an entrepreneur, part of it. Or, you know, it goes hand in hand. But I live on my terms. 
I do things the way I want to do them. And that's a great thing, you know, but you should at least think, don't be a zombie. Don't think a certain way just because everybody else thinks that way. Think on your own terms. Be your own person. Last thing with the autonomy too, even if you try to call me, chances are you're not going to get me because my phone is always on silent and it's usually flipped upside down. Again, I'm not going to let other people dictate how my day goes. And that's part of a brain science thing too, right? You can't always be in reaction mode. That's going to cause stress levels to rise up. And if you're sitting there doing work and the phone rings or text message goes off, that's reactionary. Shut the damn thing off. It's, you're not going to die if you, if you turn your phone on silent. But we could go into a whole thing with that. If you go back to the time management one, I talk a lot about that. That was probably a year and a half ago, maybe. All right. And the, the last one is the law of leverage. Okay. What is actually, we'll split this into two. So the law of leverage, for example, when I write something, I use it all over the place. I put it in a book, put it in an email, make it a blog post, put it on Facebook, all this stuff. Okay. Instead of writing four different things, boom, one thing and use it to that advantage. If the message, and if you know your philosophy and what your message is, it shouldn't have to change with all these different mediums. So the law of leverage, this is leverage, right? So now I do these on Facebook Live on my page, and then I do them, the recorded podcast that go to iTunes. So two for one right there, okay? And lastly, good is good enough. Too many people want things to be perfect before they send them out there because they think they might be judged. They think that... Uh, it's just not good enough yet. They're waiting for all the lights to be green. Good is good enough. Get it out there and you fix it as you go along and you learn, okay, that didn't work. Okay, why didn't it work? Let me change it. Boom, do it again. If you wait for perfection, that's really just a form of fear. And I've talked about this in the past because some of you have reached out to me saying how it impacted you. But perfection is a form of fear. You're scared of judgment. And judgment doesn't really mean anything. It's a, it's a hardwired, it's an evolutionary thing in the brain. But if we judge you, you're not going to get kicked out of our tribe. And if somebody unsubscribes from your email list or, or they block you on Facebook, who cares? It doesn't matter. Good is good enough. Put it out. You know, when I and I've talked about when I do these, when I write my articles and emails, I never go back and listen to these, never edit them, never go back and edit anything I write. It's written and it's sent and that's it. And I never go back and read them. All the books I've written, never read them. I write them, send them off. Boom. That's it. Now, Call it what you will, but that's how I live, right? It's autonomy, living on my terms. So hopefully in this episode, you got something that kind of clicked and maybe you just made you start thinking, okay, well, how, do, how do I want to live? You know, what is my life philosophy? And that'll guide you. If you know that, the rest of life is uh, pretty simple, all right? That's it for episode number 95. If you liked it, please leave a review on iTunes. That helps me out a lot. And I'll be back next week with episode number 96. As always, thanks for tuning in. Peace. You've been listening to The Inner Strength Show. If you enjoyed the show, remember to subscribe, rate, and review us in iTunes.